Prisma is an open source ORM that makes it easier to interact with databases. It provides an abstraction around a lot of the SQL code used to interact with our database and gives us a nice type safe client that we can use in our apps. In this video, we're going to look at using Supabasis Postgres database with Prisma to create a really smooth developer experience that should reduce a lot of issues in your app. So you're probably wondering what's the purpose of Prisma when there's a Supabase client that we can use to interact with our database. For example, in my last video, we made this login system where logged in users can see notes. If we have these notes in a database, then we can get them with the Supabase client inside of a Nuxt endpoint, where we pass in our table, what columns we want to select, as well as any filtering that we want to do. While this works, it definitely introduces a lot of places for error. For example, since these are all strings, we can pass in a wrong table name, not know the exact name of a column, and that's going to cause problems in our app. And if we hover over data, we see that it's typed as any. This means that we lose a lot of Nuxt's power when it comes to providing type hints from API responses. Of course, we we could set up our own types and interfaces specific for API endpoints, but then that makes another thing that we have to maintain. And that's not really coming from what's actually in our database, but rather what our Nuxt app is assuming is in our database. So for database changes, all of our types could be wrong. However, Prisma knows a little bit more about the shape of our data. We know exactly what models we have access to, what fields we have, and we get a whole bunch of nice type checks to catch a lot of those errors that are harder to track with the Supabase client. So now that we know how Prisma can help us, let's go ahead and install it. First, we want to install the Prisma CLI, and then we want to say npx prisma init. This sets a default schema inside of a Prisma folder, as well as gives us a placeholder database URL inside of our .end file. Now let's go ahead and sync Prisma to our Supabase data. We'll open the Supabase app and go to Settings, Database, and go ahead and grab our database URL. We can grab this link, replace the placeholder, and throw in this password that you should have set up when you made your Supabase project. And since we already have data inside of our Supabase project, we can introspect our database. We can say npx Prisma db pull, and what this will do is look at the schema of our database and generate our Prisma schema off of that. Finally, we want to install the Prisma client and then say npx Prisma generate. And this uses our Prisma schema to create a fully type safe client that we can use in our Nuxt app. And we can actually see the source code for our client by going to node modules prisma slash client. And then in this file, we can see that we have a type for notes as well as types for all of the different ways that we want to interact with this model. For example, querying, upserting, all of these different things have their own type, which makes it amazing to work with. Now that we're set up, let's go ahead and rewrite our example from earlier using Prisma. But first, I want to say thanks to the sponsor of this video, Storyblock. Storyblock is a headless CMS that really helps bring your code and your content together. Even though its API works with any tech stack, I've been using the Nux3 module, a LearnView's homepage, and I love how easy it is to build reusable blocks as view components, add in all the features and interactivity that you need, and then directly edit or build with these blocks inside of a nice visual editor. So even non-technical people can still use your components. It has great support for internationalization and is super extensible for any a use case. Honestly, I've really been enjoying it so far, so I'm going to make some more story block content soon. But for now, let's just go ahead and get back to the video. So we can go back to our endpoint, import the client, and say cons prisma equals new prisma client. And if you're deploying this to a serverless environment, it's a good practice to instantiate this prisma client outside of our handler. This can decrease the number of connections to our database by making it more likely that our client gets reused if we're hitting a warm lambda. And now all that's left is to use this client to query our data. We can say await prisma dot, and then everything after this is typed depending on the schema of our database. As you can see in the autocomplete, our client knows that we have a model called notes. And then now we can see all of the different operations that we can perform. As you can see, there's a ton, so I'll leave a link to the full documentation in the description. But for ours, we want to say find many, since we want to get all the notes for a given user. And then similar to SQL queries, we can say where in order to filter our results, and then say select if we only want to get specific data. And this removes a lot of those places where we can make mistakes. The name of our table has to match what's in our schema. If we try to reference a field that doesn't exist, we get errors as well. My favorite part of using Prisma is how well it works with some of the really cool features of Nuxt. If we hit this endpoint from a use fetch, the data we're getting back is still typed with whatever we're selecting from our database. This means that without having to worry too much about types, and just by setting up Prisma, we have so much extra knowledge of the data we're getting, and this really helps from a developer side. And there's a whole bunch of other cool things we can do with Prisma. If we change our schema, we can push these changes to our database, or we can also migrate these changes which generate a SQL migration file as 
well as give us more control over how different fields change. I think I could make a full video on that topic, so let me know if you'd be interested in that. But that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more view content.